30-day exploration in country, complete with three detailed separate budgets. Budget number one, Cheap Charlie stays in a hostel. Budget number two, until you meet a woman, spend as little money as possible. Get a three-star hotel, 30 U.S. dollars per night. Keep your expenses down. Budget number three, try and get some of your Western comforts. $60 a night for accommodation. I'm going to give you a complete budget breakdown for what it costs for a 30-day exploration in country. Stick around. We're going to talk about how do you meet women. We're going to get into the granular level. What is it going to look like when you're in country? What is it going to feel like to be solo traveling? I want to talk to you about the cost of doing nothing. It is your year to become visible again. No more invisible man in the West. No more dating women that don't interest you. Have you ever calculated the cost of doing nothing? Growing old, being unhappy, being stuck in a relationship that doesn't make you happy? Do you deserve to be happy? You've worked your whole life. You've had miserable bosses. You've been in some difficult situations, some difficult relationships. The things you've had to put up with to make a life in the West. It wasn't easy. And now you're at an age where you want to break out. Now, We've covered a lot of subjects in 2023. We've talked about how to meet the ideal Filipina. We've published the 90-day expat plan with over 50,000 views so far. It goes into great detail about when to go online, the tools you're going to need. We're going to assume that you have not done a deep, deep, deep study. You've been busy. You've been in a relationship. You haven't been able to spend hours and hours and hours studying what it would be like to come to the Philippines. You're not an expert. You've picked up a few tidbits here and there from YouTube, from Facebook, from other places. So like a lot of people, you're just going to head to Cebu City. You don't really know what you're doing, but heck, get an airplane ticket, find 30 days of time, and go to Cebu City and try and spend 30 days in the Philippines, get the lay of the land, see if you can meet a Filipina. First, I want to talk about another YouTube vlog I watched recently. There's a vlogger that's been in this space longer than almost anybody else, maybe 10 years, and he published a YouTube uh, several months back, and he talked about the boots on the ground rule. And what he said is, you can be in a long-distance relationship, but you need to know that a Filipina will follow what's called the boots on the ground rule, which is that no matter what, if she's never met you and a Western man approaches her at the mall or a Western man is introduced to her at a party, she will pursue that Western man. Who, what he's saying is you cannot count on a Filipina to be loyal to you if you've never met her. You may have been in a one year plus long distance relationship. You may have even sent some money for load or a birthday gift. But if she meets a man and he sort of looks like you, he's got your finances, he's funny, and he's right there in front of her asking for her phone number, she's going to give it to him. She's not going to consider it as cheating on you because she's never met you. And she's not sure when she does meet you that you're going to like her, that you didn't show up to meet three other women at the same time. So this idea of dating far in advance online is very, very challenging. You might find somebody, and there are lots and lots of guys who did have one-year relationships online and came to the Philippines and their girl was waiting for them loyal and faithful and it all worked out. But as a rule, it's not a good play to go online far, far in advance. All these online platforms are full of scammers and liars and cheaters and at best there's 50% real opportunity, real province type Filipinas. They're not bar girls. They're not big city girls. They haven't dated other Western men. They're there. They exist. That's what we're looking for. We'd like to come to the Philippines and have that girl waiting for us after having searched for someone who's the age we're after. Search for someone who maybe has a college degree. Search for someone who lives in a part of the Philippines we'd like to retire in. There's tremendous advantages to online dating. And recently I asked a Facebook group, Philippine Expats, and 276 people responded to the survey I posted, and the majority of them met their Filipina online, like I did. So, in the 90-day plan, which talks about everything comprehensively, packed full of information, including budgets of, of, in Thailand, um, 
it tells you don't go online until you're 30 to 45 days before arrival in the country because the philosophy is the boots on the ground mentality can work against you you don't want to invest six months nine months in a girl and then a month before you arrive she meets another western man and she's going to do what's in her own best interest the man in front of her who seems sincere who's here in the philippines ready to rock and roll and wants to go out on a date with her she's probably gonna say yes there's a lot of people who say just get to the philippines forget all the scammers and all that online nonsense when you're here you'll be able to sense in person however those same vloggers, the one I mentioned earlier who'd been in the Philippines for 10 years and other vloggers I'm sure you're familiar with, they have been in the Philippines for 5 to 10 years and they've dated many, many different Filipinas. It took them 5 plus years of dating dozens of different Filipinas before they actually settled down and got engaged or married. What's going on? It's so easy to meet the ideal Filipina, they say. Just show up, boots on the ground, boom, you're going to meet the Filipina. Well, yeah, if you're interested in having someone to sleep with at night and go out on excursions and who will be loads of fun, it's pretty darn easy. If it's the person you want to spend the rest of your life with, someone you can talk philosophy, politics, world history. She knows who Napoleon is. She's heard of World War II. You know, if you want to have basic conversation, then you may not meet that person right away, just arrive. So today, we're going to assume that you struck out online. Let's say you've decided, hey, you're just going to come to the Philippines. You don't want to go to Manila because it's, you know, traffic and pollution. And a lot of the girls in Manila are less, less trustworthy, to be honest with you. When you're online, I don't know. A girl living in Manila is just a little too big city for some of us. So what you're going to do, like most people, is you're going to go to Cebu City. It's got a lot of traffic, and I've said before, it's not my favorite place, but there's lots of excursions you can do on day trips, and there are a ton of women who work in call centers, and their English is really, really good. Let's talk about like who you are and what you're seeking. Now, we know that a Western man, an older Western man, he's divorced, he's in an unhappy relationship, his pension is not going to really go as far as he thought because this recent a round of inflation. How equipped are you to know if you've met a really wonderful woman? Now, one of the first problems you may have is if you were not in the Navy, you were not a military man, you've never dated an Asian woman before. Maybe you were like me, you were married 27 years to a Caucasian woman roughly your own age, and you've gotten divorced, and you've done some dating. Have you ever been with an Asian woman? Do you know what it's going to be like? They don't have hair on their legs. Their skin doesn't have those wrinkles. They're very, very petite. Are you just going to be overwhelmed by the first Asian woman that you get intimate with? Now, in my case, after my divorce, I dated a Japanese woman roughly my age for five years, and I dated a woman from Taiwan for five years. In between, I dated a Korean woman for three or four months and a few other Japanese women. So when I started dating online and looking for a Filipina, I had some experience that many of you may not have had. Maybe you have never dated an Asian woman before. It can be very intoxicating. They can be extremely sensual and pleasing and very, very pleasant. Their demeanor, their sexuality, it can overwhelm you. And the reason I mention this is you may not be equipped to uh, fight through that charm and that sexuality to determine if they are an ideal partner. So who lives in a city that you desire to live in? And next thing you know, you meet a girl with no college degree who's extremely young and she's interested in you. And oh my God, you're overwhelmed. You can't believe how young and beautiful she is. And you have never been in a relationship with a young woman or you've never been in a relationship with an Asian woman. And all of a sudden, your ability to determine What's a good selection? What's a bad selection? Uh, imagine if you were uh, in charge of hiring for your company and you had never hired before. And the first woman who walked in and smiled at you was just like so charming you gave her the job. 
Well, that wouldn't work out too well. And so we want to be careful. A lot of expats are always saying that you should date more than one woman when you get here. And I think that if you had never dated an Asian woman before, you'd never been intimate with an Asian woman before, that might be good advice because it would be very, very easy for you to be taken in and convinced that you'd found an unbelievable opportunity because of how sexual and sensual and pleasing this woman could seem to you without really understanding the full breadth of opportunity and the other candidates that you might have come across. So that lack of experience is gonna not be good even in your online dating uh, investigation. But when you get boots on the ground, beware, beware. If it's your first opportunity, don't allow yourself to be totally overwhelmed and your judgment to go by the wayside. You might wanna pursue more than just one Asian woman initially. We're going to assume you've never been to the Philippines. This is your 2024 exploration trip. You struck out online. You're not going to visit specific girls. You're not, ha you don't have dates lined up. You're just coming to the Philippines. Or if you do have a date lined up, you meet her and it doesn't work out and the rest of your 30 days. And you don't want to just go tour the Philippines. That's not your goal. You want to get a feel for the country. You figure Cebu City's good enough. You'll be on a few excursions. You'll get out of town a little bit. But basically, you want to spend a little less money than not here to see every site in Asia. You just want to come to the Philippines, figure it all out, come back to the United States and make a decision. So... Here's what I would say to everybody who's never been to Asia. If you are wanting to experience Asian women, you're looking to have some intimacy. You want to be sure that you're going to have a fun time and you're not sure about solo travel. My advice is go to uh, Thailand and land in Bangkok, spend a few nights there and head for Pattaya. You will not feel out of place as a single man because it is a town full of single men. Now, some men go together and they'll be in twos and threes, but there will be an abundance of solo traveling single men, and they're there for a good time. And if they're smart, they brought 24 or 48 uh, condoms and a bunch of cash, and it's going to cost six US dollars to get a normal massage. You had 15 US dollars, they're gonna put a smile on your face. If you want someone to come to your hotel room or your condo, you should assume it's gonna cost between 33 and 50 US dollars for the hour. If you want someone to spend the night, you should assume it's gonna cost double the short time hourly rate. And You'll be buying lady drinks at the bar, and there'll be poker games. There's tremendous amounts of live music. So you could go to Thailand, get it out of your system. You know, make sure, you know, you don't want to come to the Philippines for 30 days and come home with a goose egg, a zero on the scoreboard, that you didn't sleep with anybody. You went to Asia. You wanted to figure this all out. So if that's what you're interested in, you might want to go to Thailand first. Thailand has really better infrastructure. The food is phenomenal. The women are exotic. They have that kind of Chinese, South Korean, blended, Southeast Asian look. Um, and it is an amazing experience. And it's a really easy thing to do as a single man. So you might want to go there for a week or uh, two weeks before coming to figure out the Philippines. Now, why the Philippines? Is there are three reasons that people choose the Philippines primarily. Uh, it's English-speaking country, sort of. English is primarily number one. Uh, number two is immigration. is very, very easy here in the Philippines. You can stay three years without leaving the country and just pay uh, roughly $45 a month on average for three years. And then you can just fly to Kuala Lumpur and fly right back the next day. You get another three years. So it's very, very easy. The Filipinos love America. They love Western culture. And um, the third reason, Filipinas are so sweet. They are like the ideal girlfriend. It, to some extent, they're a little over the top. They're so sweet, they become a little jealous. So the sweetness does come with a downside. They're extremely jealous. Uh, but boy, they cling and they want to please and they like to stay home. You don't have to take them out at club. You don't have to buy them expensive things. They go, they're religious. They love their family. It's it, you're not having to entertain this woman full time to keep her happy. She just wants to be 
with her man and in a relationship she values and she trusts. So that, those are the reasons, immigration, English, and the Filipina sweetness. So you've decided, it's 2024, the cost of inaction is ridiculous. You're not going to end your life in a miserable situation. You're going to do something about it. And you've seen people like myself. There's lots of us on YouTube. There's lots of men who have taken action and dramatically changed their life. You come and you explore and you do things that are not too big a risk. So you're going to come to Asia and figure out what it's all about. And at this point, you're just coming to Cebu City for 30 days. So let's take a look at what that trip's going to really look like. Yeah. Most men want to come on vacation and find a girlfriend experience, which means they want to find a girl who will sleep over, spend the day with them, go on excursions, hang out at coffee shops, walk around the malls, show them the Philippines, and kind of fall in love and have uh, just a romantic vacation. When you arrive, you want to find a girl who has a job. I mean, that's basically the challenge. A girl who has no job, well, you find those online, and there are plenty of girls in the provinces. They're, they're taking care of family members, or you know, maybe if you meet them far enough in advance and they have jobs, you can coordinate her, her two weeks or three weeks of leave can occur while you're visiting. But if you just show up now, everyone's going to tell you, find a woman with a job. That's the woman who's not a scammer, not a cheater. The reliable woman who, you know, comes from a good family. She's religious and she went to college or she works. And they say, go to the mall, go to the coffee shops, find them at their job. So you go to the mall and you walk into Watson's drugstore and you chat up this gorgeous girl at Watson's and you ask her out on a date. Well, she may not commute two hours every day, but she has a job and her annual leave and her ability to just take time off is severely limited. Now, what are you going to do? Maybe one day a week she has her day off and she's not going to church. And she doesn't have a family birthday. She doesn't have a family celebration. It's not her grandmother's birthday, her brother's birthday, her cousin's birthday. That Sunday. And you can take her on a full day excursion, maybe. So maybe you can see her three Not If she lives at home, she's going to have to be home by 11 o'clock. And she's going to get up very, very early to come back to work. And so that's what you're looking at in a best case scenario. You're going to meet a girl who has a job in a call center. If she's in a call center, well, she works all night. She gets off at 4 a.m. She gets off at 8 a.m. Okay, you can see her a little bit during the day, but she's tired. She needs to sleep, and she's not going to be going to excursions. Um, so what will you do? So let's think about this. You're coming to the Philippines. You're here to walk the malls hang out at the coffee shops, flirt with the waitresses. You want to go to the IT parks and hit the coffee shops at the IT parks. You want to meet a call center girl who speaks good English, who has a college degree maybe. Okay, now you're going to meet them, but they have a job. They can call in sick one day and take an excursion. How are you going to make the most of this 30-day trip? This is the real challenge. And this is the other side of the boots on the ground equation. These girls are chatting with other Western men. These girls, if they're interested in you, they may be online. They may have a long-distance relationship. They may need an hour a day to maintain that relationship. And that's why they can't come over in the morning or they have to get home at 8 o'clock at night because they got to be on the telephone with that other Western man. They're trying to keep that ball in the air. But you can make the most of this. You can come here. You can meet a girl in person. She might have work responsibilities, and it may not be the ideal vacation for you. You're going to spend a lot of time at the pool. You're going to spend a lot of time walking around. You're going to spend time cooking your own meals. You're not going to be together as much as you want, but you will have quality time together. You will meet face-to-face, -face and you might form the foundation for a relationship. So what is it going to cost? Let's take a look at the budget now. What about long-distance international air flight? There's no non-stop flights to Cebu City, so you're going to change planes in Manila or you're going to go through Bangkok or another Singapore-type airport. But we're going to say you found a really inexpensive flight for $1,000. 30-day exploration trip. Now, you got $30 taxi or long-term parking at the airport. We're going to say $30 Uber each way to the airport, $60 U.S. your first expense. 
you're going to need a cell phone. I recommend an Airlo. It's about 13 US dollars for a 30 day 5 gig plan. Now, we're going to break down this budget into three separate categories A, B, and C. A, you are cheap, Charlie. You are going to stay in a hostel. You Maybe you're young and that's what you like and you don't want to spend any money. You're a backpacker and you want to hang out with people your own age, your own type of people. They're kind of free-spirited and uh, you don't want to spend money. So a hostel is going to run you around 15 US dollars per day. B, you are going to watch your pennies until you actually meet somebody so until you meet somebody you really don't want to go on many excursions you don't want to spend money on a nice airbnb you don't want to be sitting in a nice sofa you just want to watch your pennies keep it cheap you're going to get a decent decent and here's some examples a decent three-star hotel in cebu city uh and you're going to pay for for a pool and Wi-Fi included, you're going to pay roughly 30 U.S. dollars per night. Now, C, you want some Western comforts. You either want a nice Airbnb where you can relax and watch some Netflix. Maybe your girl works. You're going to be stuck in that condo. You want a nice condo. You want nice security. You don't want the noise to be too bad. You're either going to go to the most recommended hotel by Westerners in Cebu City, the Quest Hotel which I can show you here, at roughly 60 US dollars a night, or you're gonna get a nice Airbnb. If you get a nice hotel and there's too much noise or other problems, you can move. The condo, if you book it for a month, you're kind of stuck there. You can have a loud neighbor. You could have rooster problems and dog problems, all kinds of problems, you never know. But those are the three main variables in the budget. Um, now, we're gonna assume that you got a fare for a thousand US dollars. You shopped and you shopped. You found the best airfare. So what do we have? We got $30 each way for Uber. We have a $1,000 international flight to Cebu City. We've got our SIM card. It's going to work as soon as the wheels touch down, the eSIM from Aerolo. And, you know, you've got your second debit card and your money's all squared away like I've talked to about to you about in the 90-day plan. Your now, main variable is going to be your lodging, but there's other variables too. Your food and how aggressive you are and creature comforts and Western style food. And I'm going to show you what it costs to eat at Jollibee's. I'm going to show you what it costs to eat at a, one of the most popular burger restaurants. I'm going to show you the menu here for Jerry's. And I'm going to show you what it costs to eat at a Korean restaurant. Essentially, I've always said it's a third of the cost of a New York City restaurant. It's half the cost of a Midwest regular city in the U.S. restaurant. But you have to assume you're going to spend at least $5 at McDonald's. You're going to spend at least $8 on a mall restaurant meal. And if you take a girl out for dinner and you order just one beer or no alcohol, she has a Coca-Cola, you're going to spend roughly 20 to 22 U.S. dollars on a meal. So... Um, how often are you eating out? Do you have a kitchen available? But if you're a category A, the hostel, we're going to budget for food only $6 a day. You know, you're, you're eating granola for breakfast. You probably don't eat much for lunch. You're going to buy a bottle of water while you're out doing your thing. You're taking cheap knees. You know, you're not spending money. So $6 food. That's it. $6 on food. You want to know a cheap budget? Category B, the three-star hotel guy, we're going to give you $10 a day for food. That's it. Okay? You're going to, if you bought a few eggs and you have a little bread at home, you know, you can make breakfast for $1.50. Maybe you go out for your main meal at lunch and uh, you're going to spend $6 at a McDonald's or $8 for a burger, but it's $10 a day. That's it. And then if you're category C and you're in a nice Airbnb, we're going to give you a $15 a day food budget. That's enough money to go out for one restaurant meal every day have a nice uh, protein dinner at home with a salad and then make your own breakfast coffee shops here's an example of what it costs at a coffee shop it's real simple it's three dollars no in the u.s it's like five dollars now for a cup of coffee but basically you're gonna spend three dollars for a cup of coffee here in the philippines at a nice coffee shop and if you have a date it's gonna be six dollars for just one and you know if you're hanging out sometimes one cup of coffee is not enough if you're gonna have you're going to go in the morning, you like that coffee culture, you like the free Wi-Fi. You're going to have your hot coffee in the morning at 8.30, 9 o'clock, hang out there for an hour. You're going to come back in the afternoon and get an iced coffee for another $3. But we're budgeting 
just one dollar for coffee for the hostel uh, category a he's going to get instant coffee at 7-eleven he's going to make two three cups a day he's going to have his coffee category b he's going to spend just four dollars a day for coffee so he's going to have one coffee at the coffee shop and he's going to buy some coffee for a dollar or two to have at the hotel room and then if you're in the airbnb category c it's six dollars a day you're going to go for your hot coffee in the morning you're going to get an iced coffee at home or you're going to have a coffee maker in the coffee shop we're going to budget three beers a day okay now you're going to go to the grocery store you're going to buy the cheapest san miguel beer whatever they have red horse it's one dollar per can of beer roughly now if you're in a restaurant you can pay two dollars for a beer but if you buy beer three a day we're going to budget three dollars for the hostel category a five dollars for the three-star hotel category b and eight dollars for category c assuming you buy a few more of your beers in restaurants now what about transportation buses and taxis if you get on the jeepneys they're so crowded in cebu city i just don't know but you know the hostel guy's going to get on the jeepney and it's going to be really really cheap and he's going to spend a budget of just three dollars a day we're assuming uh, every second or third day he's going to take a taxi uh you know maybe he takes two or three jeepneys a day uh, he tries to walk as far as he can but averaging over a 30-day period we're going to give just 90 dollars for taxis and transportation um, in a new city that he's not familiar with so primarily jeepneys but the occasional taxi and those taxis will sit in traffic and it's going to cost more than you think because you're just stuck in traffic uh category b the three-star hotel we're gonna give him six dollars a day for transportation that's basically one or one five dollar taxi ride one five dollar taxi ride a day and then you got two or three jeepney rides and a lot of walking and category three just ten dollars for taxis so that's two five dollar taxi rides per day you didn't come to the philippines to be by yourself let's assume that you're in the malls you're at the coffee shops you're meeting other expats you got on facebook groups you announced that you're in town you joined an online dating site which i recommend to keep your dating site going once you're in town you're setting up dates now I didn't budget for the cost of the girl's taxi, but it's a really, really good idea to arrange a grab car in Cebu City to pick her up. Otherwise, you will wait an hour. She will not show up. She's not going to want to spend her own money, five to six dollars on a taxi to come from her house into downtown Cebu City, and maybe you're not there. So the smart move is arrange a grab taxi for her in advance so you can watch and see that grab car arriving at your destination they are gonna be late be ready for that but i didn't cost out the budget for providing her with taxi fare to your date and home from your date but we're gonna have three dates a week that's it just three dates a week right roughly every other day so if you're living in a hostel and you go on a date Let's assume you go to Jollibee's uh, for five dollars per person. Maybe that includes beer you brought, you bought yourself, or you had to buy a two-dollar beer. Ten dollars for a date is what we're budgeting. Three times a week is thirty dollars a week, or one hundred and twenty dollars a month for dating. If you're a three-star hotel guy, we're gonna budget forty-five dollars a week. So that's fifteen dollars per date it's a cheap mall restaurant you're gonna go get a burger at the mall no alcohol that's your date you're gonna walk around no coffee after the date may, or you may you know fifteen dollars that's your budget if you're the airbnb guy we're gonna budget only sixty dollars that's gonna get you a mall restaurant a couple of beers or it's gonna get you a decent restaurant no alcohol at night so I've shown you the cost of the restaurants. We can go over these again. But the other costs are excursions. Now I like to use K-Look. K-Look or Kluk. Uh, it's a, at a Hong Kong. It's a really good um, excursion site. What I like about it is they give you back money when you write a review. And a lot of the young people use this site and they write reviews. So the normal excursion sites, you don't get many reviews. You only get the people who are motivated for some reason. You know, their tour guide begged them to write a good review. 
But Klook, like you get a really high percentage of people writing reviews in real time. You get reviews from the day before, two days before. So you get a really high percentage of reviews. Here's a look at some of the excursions in Cebu City from Klook. And uh, you can see the cost. Some can be very, very cheap. Uh, others average around $20, $25 a day. Well, if you're the hostel guy, it's two excursions, $12.50 each, or one a week at $25. If you're the three-star hotel guy, we're going to budget $50 per week for two excursions, $25 per excursion. So you're going to go on either two by yourself and pretty average excursions, or you're going to take your girlfriend on her day off for one. And if you're the Airbnb condo guy or Quest Hotel guy, we're going to budget $75 per week for two excursions. So you're going to take your girlfriend out on two medium price excursions or you're going to go on one nice excursion by yourself and take your girlfriend on one nice excursion. So that's 75 per week for the Airbnb category C. Now, what other expenses do we need to budget in and calculate for? Well, we needed toiletries, we needed shaving cream, we needed razor blades, we needed sunscreen, we needed to buy insect repellent before we left home. These things are crazy expensive when you get here on site. Maybe you had to buy a pair of water shoes, maybe you, you, ha you bought a pair of goggles. We're going to just say 50 US dollars was spent specifically for this trip. So we're going to add that in just like the airport parking or the Uber to the airport. You can't forget those things. If you're meeting some girls, you're going to have to buy them a little bit of load for their cell phone. You want to video chat them when they get home from work and, you know, they didn't have time to stop by and see you. So let's assume $5 per week to buy load for girls that you've met. That's 20 US dollars. What about gifts? Okay. You don't have to spend much money on gifts, but if you've met girls and you're taking girls out to dinner, you're going on second dates, you know, $10 a week on gifts. If you take them to swim with the whale sharks, maybe you buy them a pair of water shoes, maybe you pair buy them goggles, maybe you buy them a souvenir. Just $10 per week is $40 for the month. Now, there's also another gift category. What about those grandchildren back home? What about your family and friends back home? You might want to buy some souvenirs. We're going to budget $50 for souvenirs for people back home. Now, one other cost we have to assume is you're going to take your girlfriend to the coffee shop. So in addition to your own budget for coffee culture and coffee shops, we have to spend a little bit of money, $3 per cappuccino three you're gonna have to buy your girlfriend coffee drinks it's gonna be something you'll want to enjoy doing hanging out in the coffee shop together so uh, go ahead and budget uh, three coffees per week which is nine dollars per week or thirty six dollars a month for coffees for your girlfriend your total budget for category a a hostel fifteen dollars a night is $2,329. Could you shave a few dollars off? I'm not sure how. Maybe you just don't meet a girl. You don't go out on a date. You don't do any restaurants. I don't know how you could get it under $2,000, including airfare. It is staying at a three-star hotel with a pool and with free Wi-Fi. If you're like $31.34 US dollars per month. Now, category C, $47.64. If you're an Airbnb, Quest Hotel kind of guy, you want some of your Western creature comforts, you want to go out for a Korean barbecue once a week, you want to eat some seafood, you want to buy some quality protein to eat back in the Airbnb, you want to go on more than three dates a week, maybe you want to go on, you want to see your girl every night at a restaurant, well, it's going to cost more. And I've said before that if you plan to have drinks, excursions, budget $200 per day for the full package. Uh, you can have a nice Airbnb, have a lot of Western comforts at 6,000 for 30 days. A lot of people say, no, 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 that's way too much money. And I, I agree. It is way too much money. If that's not your budget, you can do it for 2,300. You can do it for 3,000. You can do it for 4,600. The true girlfriend experience, someone who can speak English, someone who will be willing to have a 30, 40 year age gap and truly love you. So here in the Philippines, we have that kind of sweet spot, that mix. Where can you find a woman who will see you as a 65 year old man as virile and exciting and the catch? And she will, yes, appreciate your stability, your security. 
but she will fall in love with you and give you this Filipino girlfriend experience that you desire. A budget of $2,000, $3,4500. That's what it takes. You're retired. You can get a month off. You can, if you can only get 17 days or three weeks off, okay, get your 17 day butt out here. Do not sit there and just watch the world on YouTube. Get involved. Get here boots on the ground and if you can watch the 90 day plan if you haven't seen it i show you when to get online what to do to maximize your opportunities online how to deal with all the scammers online and you could plan a different kind of exploration visit where you have a potential prospect in Manila, another potential prospect in Cebu City, or maybe you just sifted, sorted, and condensed online, and you just met a girl of your dream. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to watch the 90-day plan. Take action. Happy New Year, everybody. 2024 should be your best year.